Well, I hope you brought your notes home. I brought my hard copy of my written out notes, but I did not have a digital copy. So um, this still is where we left off. Um, so find this spot in your notes. And we're going to need to complete the square in order to write the equation of the ellipse in standard form. Then we're also going to have to find the um, endpoints of the major and minor axes of the foci and the center. So we'll be using our formulas. Um, so I know I'm going to have to complete the square for the x's because there's an x term as well as an x squared and as well as the y. So we're going to actually have to complete the square for both. So we're going to start by doing 16x squared minus 96x plus blank plus 9y squared minus 36y plus blank equals negative 36 plus blank plus blank. Okay, so I'm getting it set up. But remember, we can't complete the square if there's a coefficient other than 1 in front of the x squared, so I have to factor out a 16. So when I do that, I'm going to get x squared, and very conveniently, um, 16 goes into 96 six times, so we get a minus 6x. Then we'll have a plus blank. Factor out the 9 here, so we have y squared minus 4y plus blank. And here we still have our blanks. So now remember we take half of the middle term and square it. So when I do that, um, ha I have a negative 3 squared as a positive 9. But remember I didn't really add 9 to this side. I have to do 16 times 9, which is 144. That's what I added to the left side and that's what I have to add to the right side. If I take half of negative 4, I get negative 2 squared, I get 4. But remember, I didn't add 4 to that side. 9 times 4 is 36. That's really what I added. All right, so then now we've got 16. Put this into the perfect square format. Um, so we have x minus 3 quantity squared. Here's what I found. <laughs> OK, thanks a lot, Siri. Um, plus 9 times y minus 2 quantity squared equals, and then when you do the math over here, you get 144. All right, now remember the, the format of the equation, we want this right side to be equal to 1. So we're going to divide everything by 144. And very conveniently, 16 goes into 144 nine times. 9 goes into 144 16 times. I would call these textbook problems because they're nice. OK, so here is my equation in standard form. So what does this tell me? Right away I know because the value underneath the y terms is larger, I know that this is an ellipse that is going to be vertical. Um, so you can get, um, we know the center is hk, so that's going to be 3, 2. That's nothing new, we're familiar with that. Um, to get the um, vertex, so if you wanted to look at, go back and look at your formulas, um, I'm not going to be pulling that up there, but for the formulas for the, verti for the vertices, we have h, comma, and then k plus or minus a. So remember that a is the square root of 16, which is 4. b is the square root of, three, uh, square root of 9, which is 3. So we're going to have, for the vertex, we're going to have um, 3, comma, and then 2, because it's going to be k, which is 2, 2 plus or minus 4. But don't leave it like that. So we have 3, 6, and 3, negative 2. So those are our vertices. Um, the endpoints of the um, minor axes Okay, so if you look at our formula sheet, it is um, h plus or minus b comma k. So we get 
3 plus or minus b is 3 and k is 2. So that gives us um, 6, 2 and 3 minus 3 would be 0, 2. So those are our endpoints of our minor axes. So the other thing that we need left is the foci. So remember to find the foci. It is h, k plus or minus c, and then remember that um, c squared is a squared minus b squared. So then c squared is 16 minus 9. So we get 7. So then c is the square root of 7. So our foci is going to be 3 comma 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. And we could leave that like that for the foci. So we have all the information that we were asked to find. So you'll really like graphing ellipses because they are so easy to graph. Um, we know that on this one, the HK is 0, 0, 0. So we know our center is 0, 0, which is not part of our graph, but you know we want to keep in mind where that center is. So I'm just going to put like a little X to mark the spot. I mean, it's not really that important here because it's 0, 0. Now I know that um, because the value underneath the x is larger, I know that this one is going to go in this direction. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to, from the center, you're going to take the square root of 25, which is 5. So this is a, okay, and then we know b is 2. So that's b. So from your center, you're going to go 5 to the right. I'll make a little x, 5 to the left, so you're going to go the value of a, and then you're going to go to, from the center, you're going to go the value of b in the, in the vertical direction, and then you're going to just draw in as good as you can your ellipse. Okay, so it's not perfect. I could have used my little ellipse tool and it would have been easier. Um, but you're just going to kind of sketch it in. And that's all you had to do. Easy. On this one, not, not as easy. Oh, oh pretty close. Um, remember, we need this to be equal to 1. I can still tell. I don't have to complete the square because I have an x squared and a y squared. So we're just going to divide everything by 64 first. So we end up with x squared over 4 plus y squared over 16, nice numbers again, equals 1. So my center, again, is 0, 0. This time, I know it's going this way because the number underneath the y squared is larger. So from the center, take the square root of 16, which is 4, so up 4. Also from the center, square root of 16. From the center, the square root of 4 is 2. So we go 2 in each direction and we draw it in. Okay, that looks a little weird, but you know, I'm sure yours is gonna look better. Okay, on the next one, we are graphing, this is already in standard form, so we don't have much work to do. Um, the center this time is negative two, positive one. So negative two, positive one, we've got right here. Um, I'm counting by ones here. So I am not, um, this is not part of my ellipse, so I'm just marking the center. Notice that because the value underneath the y term is larger, we know it's going to be this way. So that means from here, the square root of 16 is 4, so I'm going to go up 4 and down 4. And from the center, the square root of 9 is 3, so to the right 3, to the left 3. And I'm not finding any of the focus, any of those other things I wasn't asked to, so I don't have to do that. We could if we wanted to, or if we needed to. Okay, so we get our ellipse. So on this next one, 
a little bit more work on this one because we are going to have to complete the square. Now, I don't have to complete the square for the x term. Notice that because there's, I mean, because there's no x. I have a y squared and I have a y, so that means I'm going to have to complete the square for the y's. So I'm going to have a 4x squared plus y squared plus 2y plus blank equals 3 plus blank. Don't have to factor anything out because it's just a y squared. So I take half of um, this, which is 1, and then so we square it, we get 1. Okay, so we're going to have this. So we have 4x squared plus y plus 1 quantity squared equals 4. But remember, this right side needs to be a 1, so we're dividing everything by 4. So I get x squared. I'm going to put this over 1 plus y plus 1 quantity squared over 4 equals 1. Um, you know, you wouldn't have to, but just be aware because you want to know what like the a and b values. So like here, we know that this one's going to um, be oriented in a vertical direction. Um, the center is 0, negative 1. So I'm going to plot 0, negative 1. There's my center. And in the vertical direction, the square root of 4 is 2, so I'm going to go up 2 and down 2. And in the horizontal direction, the square root of 1 is 1, so I'm going to go over 1 each direction and draw in my ellipse. So on this next one, we're going the other way. We're given the graph. We have to determine the equation. So first, you want to know where the center is. So the center is 0, 0. Um, we can see that the value of, this would have to be the B value, is 2. And the value, the A value, is 3. Because you can literally just count that to know that. Um, so we're going to have, so when I set this up and I'm writing the equation, I know it's x squared over something, since the center is 0, 0 plus y squared over something equals 1. So you can kind of set it up. Well, then the value, um, this is the vertical one. So remember, it's not a 3 that goes here. You have to square it. So since, since a is 3, then we get um, a squared is 9. So we're going to have a 9 here. And then for this one, we have a 2. So when we're going to square it, we get 4. And there is our equation. Super easy. On this one, we know that the center is negative 2, 2. So then that means I know that my equation is going to look something like this. x plus 2 quantity squared over something plus y minus 2 quantity squared over something equals 1. Now I just need the somethings. So here I can see is a distance of 3. I square that, I get 9. It goes underneath the x because I'm in the horizontal direction, so I'm going to have a 9 here. Then this distance here is 2 in the vertical direction. Square it, I get 4, so that goes under this y term, and I'm done. And then we have a couple of application problems. An arch has the shape of a semi-ellipse, the top half of an ellipse. So something like this. The arch has a height of 6 feet. Okay, so this, let's draw in an axis here. Um, I'm going to put that right here. So we have a height of 6 feet. So that would be this distance here. And a span of 20 feet. So from here all the way across is 20 feet. Find an equation for the ellipse and use that to find the height rounded to the nearest 0 0.01 hundredth of a foot at a distance 5 feet from the center. So we need to come up with this. So we have to identify where's our 0, 0. Well, you can kind of see how I set up my x and y axes. So I am treating this point right here as 0, 0, um, which means that this, well, and then we're going to use these values to create this. The, the nice thing about using 0, 0 is if I'm finding the equation of an ellipse, I now can say x squared over something plus y squared over something equals 1. 
And now I just have to figure out what those values are. Um, so if we were to, um, we can see that if this whole distance is 20, then this distance must be 10, which is obviously larger than um, this one. So it tells me that this, well, we know anyway, this goes in the x direction. So 10 squared is 100, 6 squared is 36, and there's my equation. So that's the first part. Now we have to use this equation to find the height at a distance five feet from the center. So if x, if it's five feet from the center, so that's gonna be about right here. So this distance is five. So I need, to, that's x. So I'm gonna let x equal five. And then we have to solve this for y. So if I plug in a five, I'm gonna have five squared. So we have 25 over 100 plus y squared over 36 equals one. Um, this simplifies to one fourth. Um, so we end up with, actually, you could do fraction busters. And if I do that, I'm going to multiply everything by 36. 4 goes into 36 nine times. 9 times 1 is 9. The 36 will cancel, leave me just the y squared. 36 times 1 is 36. So then I get y squared equals 36 minus 9 is 27. So y is the square root of 27. So if we evaluate, I mean, we could do exact values, but you know, we need, we're actually told to round. So we get y, whoops. We get y is approximately five point, asked to round to the hundredth of a foot, so point uh, two zero feet. Okay, so that would be the y value for that corresponding value of x. So the next one, a semi-elliptical archway has a height of 20 feet and a width of 50 feet. Can a truck 14 feet high and 10 feet wide drive under the archway without going into the other lane? And I still think of that, um, that stone archway um, tunnel bridge that when you're going towards uh, Lima that um, reminds me of this. Can, can you fit? So we've got this, uh, uh, again, a semi-elliptical archway, and um, it has a height of 20. So I'm going to place 0, 0. I'm going to center that here like we did before. So here's 0, 0. So that means it has a height of 20 and a width of 50 feet. Well, that means that this width right here is 25 feet. So that would be the truck's lane. So just this part right here, half of the, the um, width would represent the truck's lane. So um, that's what we're gonna have to try and decide if it can fit, but we need an equation first. So the center is zero, zero. You can see this is a lot like the other problem we just did. Um, so we get x squared over something plus y squared over something equals 1. Here we see that we have a 25, so we're going to need 25 squared, which is 625. And here we're going to need 20 squared, which is 400. So this is my equation. Um, so now I'm going to have to figure out, can a truck 14 feet high and 10 feet wide um, drive under the archway without getting into the other lane. So I'm going to use this value right here, and since it's 14 feet high, I'm going to let y equal 14 feet, and then I'm going to see what I get for x so that I could see if, um, you know, if the truck would, would fit there. So um, when we plug that in, we need y squared. If you square 14, you get 196. So we're gonna have x squared over 625 plus, here we'll have 196 over 400 equals one. And then we're gonna solve this. So you can use your calculator. So 
So here I did, um, I just subtract, did one minus this fraction and I got 51 hundredths or 0.51. And then I multiply both sides, or so I'm gonna multiply this times 625. So I get x squared, oh, what is that? So we have x squared is about 318, well not about, it is that. Um, and we want x, so let's square root that. And we get x is about 17.85 feet. So this is the clearance. So this is how far um, in order to, to clear this height. Um, and since the truck is 10 feet wide, then the answer would be yes. Okay, so that should be it. That should do it for our notes, and you should be ready for an assignment on ellipses.